All right, let's cut through all the noise surrounding the recent Bitcoin sell-off. The market is absolutely screaming capitulation right now. But you have to wonder, is that the whole story? We're about to dive deep into the on-chain data to really separate the genuine panic from what might be strategic positioning. Let's get right into it. So the overall feeling out there is pretty clear, right? We seem to be at a point of peak fear. The entire narrative is centered around capitulation. But as analysts, we know that sentiment can often be a lagging indicator. So let's see what the actual data has to say. You know, just going by sentiment alone isn't really the most reliable guide. If we want to truly understand the market structure right now, we need to dig into the on-chain and market data. That's where the real story is hiding. Okay, first things first, let's try to actually quantify this idea of capitulation. We're on the lookout for hard evidence of forced selling and widespread panic because, you know, these are the kinds of events that often signal major turning points in the market. We're going to start with a spot market. And the key questions we need to ask here are pretty simple. Who is doing the selling? And just how significant is this pressure? Really? Well, the data shows some pretty significant pressure coming from short-term holders. We're talking about a net 62,400 Bitcoin from this group moving onto exchanges, and crucially, they're selling at a loss. This is, I mean, a textbook sign of weaker hands being flushed out of the market. And the selling isn't just coming from the retail side. We're also seeing some serious de-risking from institutions. A massive $4.66 billion has flowed out of Bitcoin ETFs since their peak. What's interesting is that this kind of behavior from the bigger players really mirrors what we saw back during the March downturn. So that's the story in the spot market. Now let's shift gears and take a look at the derivatives market, because we're seeing a pretty significant cooldown in speculative activity over there. It's really important to understand what drove the sell-off. While that initial move was definitely spot-driven, the final leg down, that was a classic leverage flush. This deleveraging event has effectively wiped the slate clean of excessive speculation and completely reset open interest. And this slide really puts that leverage flush into perspective. If you look at net taker volume in the futures market, which is basically a measure of aggressive selling, it has dropped off a cliff. At its peak, we were saying negative $100 million an hour. Now it has calmed down to negative $21 million an hour. This is a strong sign that the most aggressive part of the sell-off is probably behind us. Okay, so we've analyzed all this selling pressure. Now let's flip the script and look at the other side of the equation, potential demand. And the stablecoin data gives us a really compelling peek at the capital that might just be waiting on the sidelines. Get this. In the last 24 hours alone, we've seen a $4.55 billion inflow of USDC to exchanges. That's the largest single-day inflow we've seen during this entire corrective period. It suggests a huge amount of capital, or dry powder, is being positioned to potentially jump into the market at these lower prices. All right, so let's put all these pieces together. We've got confirmed panic selling from the short-term crowd, a huge deleveraging in the derivatives market, and then this substantial amount of stablecoin capital moving onto exchanges. So how do we make sense of all these factors coming together at once? So to quickly summarize our key findings, First, there has been a clear capitulation event, mostly driven by short-term holders. Second, the market has gone through a really healthy deleveraging, which has reset a lot of that speculative froth. And third, there is a pretty significant pool of capital on the sidelines, and we see that in the large stablecoin inflows. And this all brings us to a quote from the source that just perfectly captures the current dynamic. At some point, the upside risk starts looking better than further pain. You see, after a major market flush and a big deleveraging event like this, the whole risk-reward calculation starts to shift for people, as the fear of more downside gets weighed against the potential for a pretty big rebound. So that wraps up our data-driven analysis of this big market event. And as always, remember this information is for educational purposes, it's not financial advice. The data really does suggest a potential shift in the market structure, but it's going to be absolutely crucial to watch how this sidelined capital gets deployed in the coming days. Thanks for tuning in.